indigenous histories and crafts provide this incredible, infinite use of materials and content that I really feel very privileged to have access to. The ability to take a material and to transform it into something culturally specific or have a specific narrative in the aesthetic. When I look at historic materials, it's what the incredible power of them is. The Leica Hammer exhibition really focuses on a transition in the work from 2011 up to present. Around 2010, I was really on the cusp of walking away from being an artist. When I decided to start making again in 2011, I was determined to make what I wanted to see. I started using the word maker because it allowed me to go into everything from garments to video to sculpture embrace textiles and adornment and the decorative without feeling the boundary of what art is perceived to be. The punching bag was kind of like a lifesaver for me in the sense that it was able to, as a format and the materials, it encompassed the narrative for the first time. This idea of adornment and regalia diffused the violence of a punching bag. I had to start making these pieces as a way of bridging all of these kind of gaps I decided to use beadwork and weavings and rawhide to really lessen the distance between my references and what I was actually making. What enabled me to continue wanting to be an artist was, I think, finding formats that made me feel like I was being heard. The rawhide paintings place me as a painter in a way that is freeing because the hide itself establishes whatever I do on that surface as coming from a non-Western aesthetic. The challenge is different when I go into canvas. When you get into canvas, you're bringing in all these other histories. Modernism is very much about control and the ability to dictate and predict. So it's a bridge for me to kind of think about the distinction between trying to have some control over your place and organic life where there's so much that we don't know about how things operate. In my work, the primary themes are historical references, subcultural aesthetics, so not just Native American, but also histories of like queer aesthetics and gendered aesthetics and fashion and looking at text in the contemporary world and understanding, I think, how history is relevant to the present. I look for words that I imagine that a viewer can actually place themselves within. The exploration into all of these things, psychologically, physically, was about me trying to build all of the connections between what otherwise would just be so separate and didactic, and pushing myself to articulate what those very genuine bridges were in my life. When in the studio, there's always these different parts of something coming into realization. The first one is experimentation, and then we eventually go into production with birch bark. We soak it, we peel it apart into as many layers as we can, we've sewn through it, we've embossed it, we put grommets in it, we've seen what kind of forms it will hold, and now I feel like I have a very brief short history with a material that I can begin inventing from. That has been the biggest part of building a team of people here at the studio to work with. It's opened up for experimentation to continue. My performances started with me realizing what it means to push yourself or to take risks. It was one of the last things I wanted to do, was to make me the, the subject. And the garment, as being a transformative garment, I am Jeffrey Gibson, but I'm also cloaked in a character that has yet to be defined. And so the garment is iridescent, it's organza. I'm a large man with bells and jingles and a drum inside of this rainbow chiffon room. My body has been trained to move a certain way in this world that I feel has not accepted queer indigenous men. There's shame, there's just an inhibition to entitlement, and the performances are really about me creating a space where I can experiment with entitlement. I can allow myself to move literally how I feel in terms of vulnerability. So what I hope the work is able to do is to send a signal to not just queer youth on the reservation or in communities, but maybe people who just feel like they need an expansiveness that's not presented to them in that context, that there is a community for them that wants to support them and wants to hear from them.
Like a Hammer as a title has always been conceptually and philosophically the idea of a hammer being a tool of deconstruction and reconstruction, but also I think in particular like a DIY kind of ethic that it's this simple tool that a single person can alter something with. I move forward as an artist on the trust that we all share a similar experience. Ultimately, everybody is at an intersection of multiple cultures, times, histories. The world is shifting and changing, and if you're engaged in the world, you are also shifting and changing. When I was questioning whether I would continue as an artist or not, that was the really big shift. This is the work that I needed to contextualize my painting practice. I believe that there's a lot more to be gained in the spaces in between mapped points than there is at the mapped points. So I'm trying to make everything, garments, performances, paintings that exist in my kind of personal exploration of what modernity means within indigenous cultures. I'm always looking for these in-between spaces of things.